Okay guys, welcome back. Now in ES5 or JavaScript, we had just one type of collection which was represented by the array type. So for mapping values, the best we could do was kind of abuse objects. But even then, the mapping was restricted from a string type to arbitrary values. So in this video, let us first understand what are maps and what are sets what was being done before ES 2015 to implement maps and sets, and what were their pitfalls. And in the next couple of videos, we will have a closer look at maps and sets in ES 2015. So first up, sets. Now a set is nothing but a list of values, but this list cannot contain any duplicates. And unlike arrays, where we access the individual elements, in sets, we just check if a value is present or not. We don't really access the value. So the implementation in ES5 would be something like this. We would have let my set is equal to object dot create and we would pass null so as to not inherit any properties. Then we could have a property with my set called ID and let's set this to true. So to check if ID exists or not, we would say my set dot ID and then lock to the console ID exists. Now let's save this and when we check the console, it says ID exists. Great. Now let's change true to one and save this and ID exists. But now let's change this to zero and see what happens. ID doesn't exist anymore. So are we actually checking to see if a value exists or are we checking to see if the value is non-zero? So this was very confusing in ES5. Next let's have a look at maps. A map is nothing more than a collection of key value pairs. So with ES5 to have key value pairs we would do, we would do something like this. Let my map is equal to object dot create null and then we would say my map dot name is equal to let's say Chandler <coughs> excuse me so name would act as the key and Chandler as the value so let val equals my map dot name to retrieve the value and then we can just lock to the console val so when we save this, there you go, Chandler. But unlike sets where we were just checking if a value exists or not, with maps, we actually want to retrieve the value. So consider this example. My map of 100 is equal to hello. Now, when I try to log this onto the console, I would have to say my map of as a string 100. Why? Because object properties can only be strings. So when you pass a number, it gets coerced to a string. So when you save this and refresh, there you go. Hello. So the number 100 and the string 100 both refer to the same property. And this can be a huge problem if you want to use both the number and the string as key. Now let's take a look at objects. So let my, let's create two new objects. Let ob1 equals this and let ob2 equals this. Now, when we try to create that or use that as a key, we would have my map of ob1 and let's assign a value world. Now ignore the red squiggly for now because it still works and TypeScript throws it as an error. So my map of ob1 is equal to world and when we try to the log, when we log to the console, my map of ob1, let's save this, we have world. Now let me change ob1 to ob2 and save this we still have world and we did not set or use ob2 as the key but it still refers to this world. Why? Because the string representation of ob1 and ob2 are the same. 
So if we try to console.log ob1 dot to string and log ob2 dot to string and save this. So the string rep representation is the same, object, object. And therefore, the value you use to with key ob1 is the same value with key ob2. So as you can see, we were sorely missing a data structure for mapping values. So let's have a closer look at sets and maps in the next few videos. Thank you guys for watching and don't forget to subscribe.